Well, the Hampsong Foundation, clever name, don't you think? Thomas Hampson, Song, Hampsong. <laughs> the Hampsong Foundation is about exploring poetry and music wedded in an art form called song that tells the story of, of people's lives. I think any epoch of any culture explored through the eyes of the poets and the ears of the composers tells us and informs us what those cultures mean from where those people come. If you want, it could be very much a cultural exchange. It can be an identification of cultures we do not know. And I would challenge you that if we don't know a culture, especially let's say America doesn't really know culturally as much as we probably should of Iran, what are we going to do? We're going to go look at poetry. We're going to listen to music. We're going to explore thinkers. We're going to look at historical contexts of decisions that people have made. Just as a random example, we obviously inform ourselves quite easily between the old world, Europe, and the new world, America. But this dialogue is essentially in the arts and humanities. And that's what this foundation is all about, exploring the dialogue of the arts and humanities as a cultural identifier of myriad cultures through various epochs. Well, I tell you, there's nothing more addictive as a, as a teacher or a, or a performer who teaches than participating in a younger colleague's aha moment. The first time you do some teaching and you actually feel you've participated with a ground-gaining moment of a younger colleague who desperately wants to do what you do and desperately wants to find the insides of why it all happens and why it's been written that way, uh, that's, a, that's, a, that's a very special moment that, that, that uh, I love to be part of. It's, teaching I have never felt is about bringing my wisdom and imparting it on someone else's. It's a, it's a sharing experience. It is, um, teaching is, I think, for any performer, a very important process of humbly re-identifying the real reason why we do and are able to do what we do as artists and as singers. Well, I've always been a gadget guy. Uh, you know, I, I'm, it, I suppose it starts with, with uh, Tinker Toys and Lincoln Logs. <laughs> <laughs> and Lego. I've always loved uh, how things get put together and work. So when the computer, and certainly the pers personal computer, really took hold and, and, and the laptop, that was kind of a no-brainer for me to be interested in. So the, just the phenomenon of how things works interests me. I'm, I'm fascinated by software, for instance. What drives my passion about this time in our civilization, if you will, is that with the true blooming, and we're starting now just to come into the blooming of the digital age, we have the ability to turn this whole paradigm of presentation and buying and selling and awareness and inroads completely on its head, completely the other way around. It used to be that you produced multimedia product that you got placed or you sold or you, you performed or you, 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 you made visible in some way or, or audible in some ways. What I see now that is so exciting is the digital revolution is now where we can open up the doors and windows for events happening in real time for more people to participate and even hold on to that experience in a digital multimedia way, but nevertheless get a closer feeling of what the live art form experience is all about because quite frankly, as is that my toothbrush? <laughs> because quite frankly, as wonderful as this whole technical world it is, it's all about, in my opinion, invigorating the real experience of the live musical or theatrical or musical theatrical event. It's always about people performing for people.